Hi everybody, my name is Lauren and welcome to Plants and Teens. And today's video is going to be a My Sad Plants Part 2 or Summer Edition. The first one, if you haven't seen it, I will link it up in the cards. It was back in spring, so we're going to call that the Spring Edition. And it turned out really well. You guys seem to really enjoy the video and the plants are doing good. So I figured this was a good time to kind of look at what plants I have that is looking quite sad and finally do something about it. So, if you're interested, keep on watching. And before we get started, I just wanted to say thank you again to all my new subscribers. I see you guys. We are growing and I appreciate you. Um, I'm kind of trying to figure out my momentum and what works for me. Like, I go through this thing where I post a lot of videos and then I like only post like one a week and then a lot and now so just bear with me as I figure out what works best for me um, and again if you guys ever have any suggestions or ideas on content that you would like to see please feel free to drop it in the comments below I would greatly appreciate it so yeah so first we're gonna just show you what is looking sad then we're gonna try to give it some love and then at the end I'm gonna give you guys an update on the first my sad plants that we did and I'm happy to say that they are all doing well so hopefully these will have a good outcome as well um I do plan on doing like another video that I might use this footage for about um moss poles and kind of trying to see like the progression of sizing up leaves so if y'all see this constant again or at some point that is why so the first plant that there's a few <laughs> I listen there's five plants that we're gonna look at today but do not be fooled there are more sad plants in my collection and I don't know I guess anyways let's just get to it the first is this varicosum I got this varicosum from my very first import from green spaces ID and if you guys remember or don't remember maybe I'll pop a um screenshot or playback of the original footage of when I got it it wasn't really a great plant to begin with it wasn't you know this big glorious thing it was it was a you know baby size uh, specimen but uh, I'm pretty sure the original leaves fell off they did last a long time I chopped it up and it just never really took off um, it will put out leaves and then it will eventually look really sad and sick like this. This leaf is the first leaf that looks reasonably not sick. Um, I have checked it several times for pests and have never found anything. I have treated it anyways even though I didn't find anything. And again, uh, not finding anything. But obviously something's going on with it i did want to purchase some cow milk. i keep talking about it but i haven't purchased it i'm gonna do it one of these days but we're gonna it is rooting though like it has some new roots in there but i do know over time with perlite it becomes kind of cemented so i want to and it's pretty dry actually i'm gonna spruce it up give it a moss pole and let me talk about moss poles because y'all know i hate moss poles <laughs> the next plant in the meantime is this melanochrysum and the same situation it was a long leggy vine that I got in the same order um, didn't care for the long vine so I chopped it up and it has been since producing new leaves this is an original import leaf here still hanging on looking a little crunchy but still hanging on and I'm gonna refresh it with some new substrate and give it a moss pole so I hate moss poles just for the simple fact of having to keep them moist but it was never because I didn't think they worked like I always thought they worked and that they did well for the plants I didn't feel like plants absolutely needed it to attach or grow or size up but I feel like I've seen plants that people have on moss poles size up faster than others so and I feel like these few plants here just deserve a little bit more love so I owe it to these plants to put in a little more effort. And even if it requires me to um, re-moisten the moss pole every day, I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try it and see if I can get a better looking plant. The next one, Splendid. This was a baby Splendid given to me by Dave. Really appreciate it. It's, it looked beautiful when I got it. 
but it got attacked by spider mites. So it's been struggling ever since, hence why this leaf is looking a little crazy. But again, I feel like if I just give it a little extra TLC, give it something to climb, a little extra moisture, and we'll see how it does. And as I'm looking at this, this perlite is actually quite dry. I just was going through a little like funk this past week where I just didn't feel like taking care of my plants like at all like I think the last time I looked at my plants to like take care of them was maybe Monday and in the summertime in Texas that's a problem that's too long so but I just wasn't I just wasn't in the mood I just needed a little break so I haven't been paying attention to them anywho um next one is this esmeraldense narrow form it did it is working on I can't separate it from this Ooh. okay here we go. it is working on another little leaf there which came out after I got it which is nice so it's okay and it has some nice roots but I think it had one larger leaf on here that it didn't make it but I think I'm gonna even though it's early these like it's forming a little tiny aerial root back here I'm gonna put it on a moss pole and see if it just gives it a spurt a spurt of growth so that's what we're gonna do, especially since this leaf did come out looking a little crazy. Let me see. Yeah, there's nothing on it. It just looks really crazy. So that's the that's the fourth one. And the last, but the saddest, <laughs> is my yikes, golden goddess, philodendron, philodendron golden goddess. Um yeah, I know these leaves were always a little janky, but now they're crispy and janky. <laughs> and again, that's because it sits in the sunroom and I went a week without watering it. But um, it was constantly putting out new growth. You know, it put out all of these up here. All of these it put out and it has a nice little orange stem. So it's getting a lot of light, but I've always wanted to take it out of this. It's like in cocoa coir and I don't really care for cocoa coir. At least I'm just not really comfortable with keeping the plant in it. So I'm just gonna get it in something cuter. And these parts here of the plant are not attached to the pole, which I, sh I don't know why I didn't attach it, but so these leaves came out super tiny. So I don't know, we might start over with this plant. We're gonna see what the root system looks like. We might start over because there's all of this space here and then there's all these little tiny ones here. I might end up just chopping it up and starting over. Like leave the bottom leaves, whatever salvageable at the bottom. I don't know, we'll save that for last because that's kind of the biggest project. The rest is not really that complicated. Ooh. It's gonna fall over. And as I mentioned, these are not really all the sad plants in my collection right now. I just have a bunch of plants that just need a little adjusting and repositioning and re-situating. So I just, I can't do everything. And I'm not going to bore you guys with doing everything in this video. These are just the most sad looking ones. So let me adjust the camera and let's get into it. All right. So the first one we're going to do is the Verucosum. And I just keep seeing some really amazing varicosums, and I feel like I deserve one. So, I had a plastic bag. Oh God, the plastic bag is all the way over there. Oh, okay, I guess I must get up. I'm probably gonna use the same, oh no, I feel like I just ripped something. Okay, no I didn't. I'm probably gonna use the same vessel just new substrate and I'm gonna have to rinse all these out so let's see what they're all looking like first so it looks like both of the cuttings rooted I did have one other cutting that was in here that died quite a while ago actually yeah this is super dry I'm sorry I am so sorry that this is so dry so it has good roots. This one as well. <laughs> this is so dry, oh my God. This one, the roots are quite good as well. Oh, this is the leaf that I snapped. This is like the only not sick leaf. It just looks, it just has a crunchy edge and I just snapped it. Wow, okay. 
Baxel one leafer, but very good roots and an immersion leaf. Sorry, I'm way up there. The camera's down here. Jesus. So hopefully, okay, this leaf isn't emerging, it's just the caterpillar. I'm just hoping that I'm not like ruining these plants by repotting them while they have emerging leaves. But this is my time to be able to do it. So I have to take advantage of this time that I have. All right, do I want to unpot everything all at once? Yes, I do. Okay. So that I can get rid of all the trash at once and get everything prepared all at once. I'm gonna cry some. This one constantly had roots like coming up to the top of the pot. So this one I know has a decent root system. Ugh, I'm trying to keep this in the bag. I have a potting mat on this um, little stand here and a potting mat under my stand because I do not want this perlite in my carpet. Let me grab something too. I have a little mini shovel. Where is it? Hmm. What do I do with my little mini shovel? I used to use that thing for everything. I have a big hat. Oh, there it is. Yeah. This stuff is cement. That is why perlite cannot be a long term substrate become straight cement. Uh, what's over here? Wow. So I did pick up some chunky perlite from, what's happening here? Why are we still connected? Oh, from um, Amazon. Oh, making a mess. This is different making a mess like when you're on hardwood floors versus making a mess when you're on carpet. To me, for some reason, it just really grosses me out with the idea of getting like stuff on my carpet because I feel like you can never really tell if it's really clean or not. All right, I will. Don't bark me. No. <laughs> I don't really feel the need to like rinse these off and get all the perlite off because it's going in a mix of most likely just checking for pest and I think it is spider mites. Lovely. Love that for me. Okay. Well, it's a good thing we're here and this one, whatever it was, <laughs> also died. This one is a goner. I don't even think this could be a, can this be a, <laughs> I was gonna say, can this be a wet stick? I mean, where's the scissors? Let's see, I doubt it, but let's see if there's anything. Okay, there's some healthy flesh there. I mean, it's completely dried out though, so. Um, and I don't really want another monocrysum, so I'm gonna let it go. And we'll just take this one. Oh wow, this was the butt cut and it never became anything, yeah. Wow, okay. Roots rotted, all right, got it. I think there was a leaf on here though that, um, it did have another bigger leaf that rotted off. This here looks okay. So I'm hoping that, ooh, ooh, that hurts my teeth. The sound of the metal on the glass, oh my God. I'm hoping that, ugh, like it literally hurts my teeth. Uh, Does anyone go to the nail salon and get like your natural nails done, like a man regular manicure and they cut your nails and does it like hurt your teeth? Like I don't know what it is, but when they cut my natural nails, it makes my teeth, like I feel it in my teeth, like, oof. That's what this is reminding me of. Oof, my God.
to do anything with that. I'm going to leave it in water. Um, hmm. Do I want to unpot this now is the question. That is the question. I feel like I do because if I'm going to chop it, should I do it now? So if I'm going to chop it, why does this feel like that? The it feels sticky. That's weird. I'm looking. Whoa! All right. I just had my scissors to cut something else. Where was it? Oh wow! Literally right in front of my face. I'm just gonna cut it off the pole first and unpot it and see if that'll give me an idea of what I want to do with it. to dunk this in a pot of water soak it a little bit and see if I can safely loosen up more of this cocoa core I'm not gonna lie I'm just waiting for something to crawl out of here because the last time we did this <laughs> there was Plenty of things crawling around. It was freaking me out. This is what happened with my Monstera. It was hard to distinguish, like, and I didn't want to keep ripping stuff off. So I ended up leaving a lot of the substrate on the dirt on it when I put it into LECA. And basically it just grew new LECA roots and the soil roots just rotted away. And it was fine, to be honest. There was a little transition period, but I will show y'all at the end. Well, I'll explain when you see it. Okay, let me get the plate. <laughs> so I have, I ended up rinsing the plants and spraying them down with this stuff here. And I need to make sure I reapply it in a couple days because that's usually my problem why they come back because I don't reapply. So since I was there, I just lightly rinsed the roots and there's still some perlite on them and stuff. I didn't go crazy with the roots. I just wanted to make sure I rinsed them down really good, I particularly focused on the back of the leaves, rubbed it really good just with some warm water and then sprayed it with a dead bug brew. And I'm just gonna let it sit and dry while we work. So I am about to be making the world's smallest, I can't find my, oh, <laughs> the world's smallest um, moss poles or lazy poles as seen on Charmaine's channel, Unplanned Parenthood. Um, there are several ways to make moss poles. I chose this way because like I said, I don't like the idea of having to <laughs> re-moisten moss poles daily. And with using plastic, just like if you use a plastic pot versus a clay or a terracotta pot, it um, the moisture doesn't evaporate or get or go away <laughs> as fast when it's in plastic versus um something else like a netting or just using an open moss pole with that type of like black netting that they have. So I'm just measuring it out to see. This pot is gonna be for the melanochrysum. So I'm just gonna eyeball it. Um, I do want it to be a reasonable size. And so the idea with this is that it's supposed to be my hands are so dry because I was in the water. It's supposed to be so easy that someone like me, so lazy, can do it. This is really thick plastic, wow. And I don't think these scissors are up for the job. 
and me cutting a straight line <laughs> not gonna happen so i just got this in a pack i want to say there's like five in the pack so you're supposed to be able to just do this like this and i feel like this is so firm wow i don't think hers is this firm i mean i got it off of amazon it seemed like it was the same thing but okay so what i'm gonna see is because she has a method where she uses two strips of this and interlocks them as the strap or you can also just use i need to lotion my hands oh my god <laughs> she also just uses plant tape like this but i have a feeling that <laughs> this isn't gonna be strong enough to hold it tight let's see and i realized that this brand that i have is not very good i'm just testing it out to see if i oh yeah <laughs> i already know and i didn't even this isn't gonna be enough okay so i'm gonna have to cut more strips of this to make straps to go around it um this is not a tutorial i will put the link to her video in the description below where she just shows you step by step um so it does need to fit around this. I'm just gonna use this part and see if that's good enough. And then if I need to shorten it, I can shorten it easily. But if it's too short, I can't lengthen it. So she just cuts like a strip halfway through the plastic on each end. And that creates this kind of locking mechanism oh I see okay yeah like that so I should have put the straps further on the end because there's no way this is gonna be too tight of a lock all right so let's see can I still use it even though I've put slits in it. Let's find out. Let's find out. Sorry, I hope you guys can see this. Oh, this plastic is so hard. Oh, I put this one too far. Yeah. All right, we're gonna need a new strip. Is there plastic over the... And I'm like, why does this strip seem so foggy? There's a plastic film over it. Oh my. Okay. Anywho, I messed this one up. So hopefully you guys get the idea. And then that would have been better. Okay. Lesson learned. Now we know. And it probably doesn't have to be that. Well, I kind of do want it to be that thick actually. So, what we learned on that first round is that um, we did it too far, too close. So, it needs to be more towards the end, and then it can't be all the way through. Okay. So, now, we me go like this to lock it into place. That's much better. Okay, that works. And then this would go in here like so. Okay. So, do, 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 do. yeah, this plastic is definitely way more rigid than her plastic. I'm not sure what plastic I purchased versus what she purchased. She's definitely in Canada, so I'm pretty sure that's a factor. I'm going to use all this excess plastic to stabilize it because I'm not putting a stake in here. And then it's just going to go in here like this. And the other one. This one is pretty short, so I don't know if this one is going to make it. Unless I put it up. Yeah, no, this one isn't gonna make it. 
This one is like, oh, it might, it might, it might make the cut. All right, so I'm gonna leave it in here like this so that it's gonna help me with the positioning. And what I'm gonna do for my substrate today is I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I do still have the same pond from Emerald Green Thumb. Still a good amount left. I haven't really been doing that much potting up of plants, but <laughs> I need to, but I just haven't been doing it. Um, I've always known people to mix their pond with um, perlite, but I never felt the need to because I just didn't feel that I needed to. But because these are kind of, I don't know, rehabby <laughs> type plants, I do want to make sure the substrate has a little more, because sometimes with pond, I do feel like, I know I'm not finishing my sentences and I'm sorry. <laughs> I feel like with um, LECA, because the particles are larger, I feel like I get bigger roots. I don't know, that could just be because of the plants that I've used in LECA so far. But, um, so I just wanted to make something chunky here. This is actually like way chunkier than, I don't know, should I mix regular perlite as well? Cause this perlite in here looks stupid. It looks like, what is this perlite doing in here? Let me think for a second. I'm gonna just rock with it. this to be flat against okay we're gonna redo this because this has a space back here and I want it to be flat against the back but if I take it up and out we're doing it again okay I'm gonna try to hold this as flat back here as possible so that nothing gets behind the plastic I don't want anything behind the plastic. Not for any particular reason, but I just don't want it that way. So when I first got this, um, I don't know how many, I don't have a lot of pawn. <laughs> that just hit me that I don't have a lot of pawn. Um, when I first got this perlite, it was so dusty in the bag that it was in. So it was in a bag and that bag was in my hands. Oh my God. It was in a bag and the bag that it was in was in another bag that it was shipped in. And that bag was so dusty. I didn't even get to the bag that had the perlite in it yet. And I was like, oh my God, like it's so dusty. So I rinsed it earlier today and it was just so dusty, so dusty. I thought it was styrofoam because it was just not looking right to me. All right, most of the plant is covered. So now what we're gonna do, oh, hold on, I see some. Now what we're gonna do is get the moss. All right, that looks okay, it looks okay. And yeah, I think it's okay. So basically the idea, in case you haven't seen Charmaine's video, is that as the plant grows, you can fill it with more moss as needed and add another strap as needed. But you don't need to do it right now because the plant is small. I have this moss, which is mixed with perlite and seems kind of shredded. So I'm not gonna use that but I have a whole thing here. And I have this block here that I got from Pet Smart or Petco, one of those, which I do like this one because it's a long fiber. 
this is really expensive. I did not want to spend the $20 for it, but it is a nice long fiber and it does, it's, it's good. You can get it off of um, Amazon, but they never have this brand on Amazon. Like it's always sold out. So I only found it at um, PetSmart because someone suggested to go to the pet store and I was like, duh, duh, let's out animals. So yeah, um, I think I'm gonna soak this before I put it in. So this is just my regular um, fertilizer water that has, that has zoo, 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 Jack's House Plant Special in it. So I'm just gonna dampen this moss a little bit. Ooh, Jesus. And after this, I don't know, maybe it doesn't even make sense. I will say after this, I'm gonna go lotion my hands, but I'm getting them wet already right now. I'm just dampening it all and then squeezing out the excess, just making sure it's all damp. So when I'm squeezing it, a whole lot is squeezing out, only a few drops. All right, so now what we're gonna do is pack this in here and basically we're air layering without air layering that's what we're basically doing and air layering definitely works so that is why we know that this works so i'm just getting it like between the back of the plastic and the plant as well and I think there's only one node each on these plants here, these two plants. But the point is just to get moss around the one node so that that node can root. And as that roots, it will um, give it more strength to push out bigger leaks. So that's done. That was actually really easy. I think the hardest part was figuring out the strap which I wouldn't have had to do if I had better Velcro. Okay, so that's done. Monochrism is done. It doesn't look as janky as I, I don't think that lazy poles look janky in general. I just don't, I don't prefer, like you guys know I like the glass look, you know, it's a little more ele elegant, a little more classy. But so I feel like moss poles just aren't that, and so yeah, but it doesn't look as bad as I thought it would look. But yeah, that's the first one Milano Prism. Moving on, yeah, that didn't take as long as I thought it would take. Very good. Let's see, who should we do next? Let's do the vertical. So I'm gonna put this in a much smaller pot than it was in before because so it was in this before which isn't bad, but I'm concerned about this neck of this container being wide enough. This probably isn't any wider, actually. Mm, I don't know. constructing the pole first is because if I go ahead and try to get this in and position the plant in this like I just feel like it's gonna be easier I actually think I could use I think I want to cut it smaller so that it brings it out more so that it's not so flat oh 
Ah, I just cut the leaf on the edge of this plastic. Okay, that worked out. Okay. <laughs> feeling oh i'm crazy why y'all didn't tell me that i was potting up a varicosum and a splendid together i'm looking and i'm like why i did not know that my varicosum was that like grown like this is not a varicosum y'all wow okay i'm looking at it and i'm like you know Something don't seem right. <sighs> okay. Good thing we didn't get a pot it up like how we did with my alocasia in the last My Sad Plants video. <laughs> I don't know, I just didn't feel like this one needed as much perlite as the other one. I don't know why, but I just didn't. So that's why I went in with the straight home. I cannot make it make sense for you, I'm sorry. So it's in there and another leaf is coming out. So I'm gonna try to not lift this out. Try to slide this up. Okay, to get that leaf out so it's not oh this is too short all right i'm gonna have to make a thinner band this band isn't gonna work or i could just cut this thinner. <laughs> i'm telling y'all this plastic <laughs> is too firm like it literally just flew across the thing i can't cut this short air because of these things that's openings after this plant yo i am lotioning my hands oh my god decapitate my plant so unfortunately we have to start over because we're trying to save and rehab plants here not make them worse so that is that This is good. I kind of like the way the big chunks of perlite look in there, even though I don't know if they're really serving a purpose, but I like the way they look. Spag, spag. <laughs> basically the same idea with anthuriums when you put anthuriums around the base of I mean <laughs> when you put moss around the base of anthuriums it grows all those adventitious roots 
that flourish and make you get lots more leaves. It is the same idea. Okay, I think this is okay. Um, I would like this one to have moss around it, but I couldn't make this band any. Let's see. Okay, all right. Second one down, varicosa. I'm gonna go lotion my hands and be back. Oh my gosh, that's so much better. I am sorry that I made y'all suffer through that. Oh, I feel so much better. Okay, so next, oh here, the Splendid, which I just tried to pot up with the um, other one, like a dummy. Let's see, this is too small. It's just kind of small, even though it's so cute. Too small. I don't really want to use this because it's so narrow. It's already hard enough to get this plastic to do what I want it to do. But maybe the roundness of this will help me. But this isn't tall enough. Let's see. This isn't tall enough. Then this is too big. We might have encountered an issue. All right, I'm going to put it back in what it was originally in because I feel like that's the only option I have. And it's wide enough for this. Um, we're gonna try it. This almost decapitated my splendid. Oh, okay, we're not gonna do it again. I just wanna see when I put this in. <laughs> All right, yeah, this is gonna be perfect. Okay, so I need to get a strap the right size. I need to get my strap the right size. Okay, so I want it to be like this. It can't be too big, the strap, long I should say, because then, I'm gonna see, is making it the same length what I need? Physics, man. Is this physics or is this mathematics that I'm trying to do right now? I think it's mathematics. I'm gonna make it kind of thin because I feel like I'm not gonna have a lot of space. I think this is too long, but I'm just gonna see. No, this is gonna be it. Yeah, this is gonna be it. Okay. And then it can't be too short because then it could make it bend and get that crease in it, which I don't like. <laughs> This way. Come this way. Don't knock anything over me. Maybe this one. For some reason, it's not like sliding in. I guess this is what happens when you don't measure, but the width is perfect. It just needs to be longer. But I don't want it that much longer. I just want it a little bit longer. I'm going to use this as a base. And maybe I can use this strap for something else. Okay. This is the best strap I've made so far. Wow. This is going to be it. This is going to be it. This is it. This is it. Only after the third try. Okay. Whew. Finally got it. Now. What are we putting in here? <sighs> this thing. All 
that works out and now move this down and then so you guys see i don't know if i explained this before there's i can't reach it but there's one node here and then there's a node here i'm trying to gonna try to get some moss around and then there's a node way at the bottom there as well that is what we are trying to encourage growth from So I don't pack this too, too tight, just the same way you would if you were doing a propagation. Um, you just wanna lightly pack it to allow airflow, but yet to hold a moisture. Okay, I think that's really good. That looks good. And so then we'll be able to see from the back what developments we have. Um, I kind of want to this leaf is maybe after this moves itself out of the way, I can, I wanna pack some moss up against this part. Let me see, let me see. I want this to be, to have moss up against it. I'm just worried about this one leaf here, but I think it'll be fine. I don't think it's actually I don't think I'm gonna be able to now ooh. so I want it to be like this but I don't think I'm gonna be able to unless I put another strap which I can do I just have to make it thin and exactly the same length the other one was which I don't know what it was crap <laughs> <laughs> Love that for me. Because this was becoming a little cumbersome, I'm not gonna lie. All right, so here you guys can see kind of a little bit more of a progression of one, what it would look like as you would grow it more. This one just happens to be tall enough for me to need two straps um, because there was another node here that I wanted to try to activate as well. So that is why I made this one a little bit taller and packed a little bit more moss in it okay that looks okay i think it looks good what do y'all think <sighs> i'm getting tired <laughs> i don't know what i'm gonna do with this um golden goddess it looks crazy all right let's finish this one this is the last one of the small ones and then the golden goddess look at these roots looking so good and i've only had this what I went to, I came back from Pennsylvania the last week of June, so it's been three weeks, and these roots are amazing. All of these white roots are new. All right, what are we putting this in? Oh, I think that was, okay, I might have to use this one because number one, everything else I have is smaller. Oh, that would actually be really cute. That would actually be super cute. Is this root system already going to be like growing out of it? I feel like it is. This isn't much bigger. It just feels like it is. <laughs> That it's better to make it a bit wider than the container so that the container can help keep it bent along with the um, strap that you put on it. Wow. 
wow, terrible at cutting straight. Yeah, oh, that's actually too long, but I'm gonna see. Mm, I'm gonna let it rock. I'm gonna let it rock. I do like the idea of these instead of using the plant tape because like I said, it holds in more moisture and it holds in more moss to me. Oh, I think this, okay, no, it doesn't work. <laughs> Only thing, reason I think it doesn't work is because this strap is too thin for the width of this. Maybe I just had it too far down. This is a weird pull. Maybe I made it too long. All right, I'm gonna trim this pull. <laughs> oh my God. I gotta be careful because I don't want it to like pop off and hit me in the eye. I need my eyes. I need my eyes. Make it thinner. Let's see if that helps. Because it seemed like it was coming up around the thing too much. All right, I think that's good. This probably doesn't make any sense to you guys with these in such small pots, but I don't know, it just makes sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> have the tiniest little area of root wanting to come out which is why I'm doing this all right as my draw dents narrow down the last beast to attack I should do something to this too, yeah, but I, this, I don't even know what's going on with this. This is the brandy out of my guy for free, and it just looks so crazy. The leaves just come out half of leaf. I don't know why. It is growing new roots, um, but I don't think, I know it sounds terrible, but I honestly don't want to put the effort in making a situation like this for this because it's so tiny and... I do care about it, but I just want it to kind of work with me here. Pull yourself together so that I can like do something with you. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? So I'm gonna clean up and then we're gonna figure out what to do with this cold and water. So I just did some major cleanup and what we have left is this hot mess here. Um, I think what I'm gonna end up doing, because I don't, once I repot this and start fresh, like I don't want, I want it to look fresh and renewed. I don't want it to look like an old tired plant that I just put in into another pot. So I tried to get as much substrate off as possible, but I was standing there for a long time trying to rinse off this, I don't know what it is. It's not soil, it's like 
moss, peat moss, cocoa core. I don't, I don't know. It was a lot. So I think I'm going to chop it all the way down because this looks crazy, right? Like this leaf, I don't like stuff like this. I don't want like, I don't want this. This has water in it. I don't want to dump it in there. Wish I had another trash bag. Um, this I don't want. I'm going to try. The first I'm just going to get rid of all this stuff I don't want. And then I'm going to decide from there, based on what's left, how I'm going to deal with it. I definitely know I'm going to chop it. Um... I'm just trying to decide this leaf is super bleached. There's nothing wrong with this leaf, but it is super bleached. I'm gonna take it off. All right, this one's a little bleached, but it's not terrible. So like this whole top here, but look, it has no leaves that I kept on the bottom. So I'm gonna chop this part, let this start fresh from the bottom with new leaves. Um, and then I will take this and maybe plant this at the bottom and then throw this in the prop box in case I lose some of the plant. I can re, I can come back for some re-ups. This one is not terrible, but it is bent. And we're gonna let it go. We're gonna, we're, oh, I'm a jerk. I just snapped this hole. You know what? It's fine because I was never going to keep this because look, this is all that's left anyways. All right. It's snapped here. I don't know. Okay. It might be able to become something. There's an ugly bud there. I'm going to leave that part. Yeah. I was never going to grow this like this. Okay. So then, yeah, because then we could put this whole thing in the substrate. Let me make it a little longer and if anything, I have to make it shorter. But I can't make it longer. Um, this leaf, I don't know what happened with it coming out, but I don't know if I want it. I'm gonna keep it up there for now. I'm gonna keep it for now. And keep in mind, this plant is super dehydrated. That's why these leaves are tacos. This is bent and broken. So I've done this a few couple of times with plants where I've cut it all the way back taking the top part, top cuts, and re-grew the top part, and it worked out okay. So this, I'm not sure what happened here. I don't know if it's, those are burn holes. I didn't see pests on this plant. I don't know why they got these spots, but I don't know, this is an unfurling leaf. Like it's coming out with those It could have been, it could be burned, but I don't know. I don't even really like this little cluster of little plants up here. I just feel bad because I feel like I should keep it because it's new growth, but I don't like it. And they're all funny looking. They're all funny looking. Okay. So we're down to a decent group of leaves here. Um, I don't think I'm gonna cut this whole thing off because it's really just this browning tip. Just cut that like that. This one is decent, but it is kind of oddly tall. All right. So we have these three pieces, which I'm still questionable about that one. I don't know if I want that one, but like this. So now I would pot it up like this and pray that these normally what i would normally do which i don't know if i'm gonna do it today um i may experiment normally i would put these in water let them start to root and then when it's rooted pop these all together that's what i would do that's what i've done in the past but i'm feeling like because i'm using leca i feel like it'll be okay i feel like it'll be okay I rinsed these under the shower, but I obviously didn't, I mean, under the sink, but I obviously didn't rinse it well. So we're using LECA. I don't know. This seems okay. This seems 
better. Um, yeah, I think that's what I want to do. Only thing about this is that I hate is that I put the holes so low. It's funny, I don't even put holes now in the bottom of my glass containers because I just don't feel like I need to. I have all of this Lekka here. This Lekka came from my Monstera, which I will be showing at the end of this video. I just cleaned and rinsed this with hot water. So we'll kind of be able to see how these roots are doing. don't I don't like the way this looks if I take this leaf off and this one off what's left you know what I'm saying it's like if I take those two off what's left maybe I'll just put this in water but in order to put this in water I have to take this bottom one off and this is definitely the auxiliary node here auxiliary bud I'm gonna just give this up there's a lot of plant here I'm just gonna give it up this one lonely one sticking out um i'm gonna leave it i'm gonna leave it and we're gonna hope and pray that is there another, i'm pretty sure there's another node in there yeah i'm pretty sure there's another node we're gonna hope and pray that these cuttings root as well and that everything's gonna be okay i'm gonna just put these in a prop box in case i lose this plant um i'll have backups or I could just buy another one. It is not a hard to find plant. And I think that's it, guys. I think that is it. I'm gonna put some water in all these plants and lotion my hands again because they are again ashy and dry and be done. So let me show y'all the updates because that is interesting. Uh, actually, I'll just give you an overview real quick of what we did and then we'll show you. Golden Goddess, we chopped her up and repotted her, hoping that the cuttings will root in here as well. I think it's gonna do better in hydroponics too. It'll stay moist longer. Um, what's this? Splendid, oh Jesus. <laughs> Splendid, looking pretty good. So the way that I chose to rehab all these plants, if you can't tell, is with lazy poles because basically they need to size up and strengthen themselves. They are pretty like weak little plantlets. So I'm hoping that this added moisture and moss around the nodes will help them to do that. And so yeah, that is what I chose to do. And all right, let me show you guys um, the sad plants from spring. I am never wearing a black shirt to film in again. It just looks dusty and crusty. So anyways, <laughs> to give you guys an update on the spring edition plants from my sad plants, here they are. And first we'll start with the Alocasia Michalitziana. I think it's called Michalitziana. Michalitziana. <laughs> Fried egg. And it looks so good now. If you guys remember, I don't know, did it have two leaves? I feel like maybe it had one leaf and another leaf like on its way out. This was the first leaf it put out after I potted it into this pond situation. And I think if you remember, it was just some regular soil and I wasn't keeping up with it. And this leaf I really love, even though it's kind of hanging and dangling, it looks like it wants to start to give up. It has this texture. And if I turn it to the side, you can see it. This texture, this pillowy texture, this is the first time I got this texture. I don't know how many times I'm gonna say that word <laughs> on this plant. So yeah, the original leaf that was sad, either did I cut it off that day or it just fell off? I don't know, but this was the next one. And then this one was the next one that came out. It was a little smaller, but it was okay. It still got that pillowy texture to it, so I still really liked it. And then it gave me this one. This is the biggest, yeah, it's kind of chubby too. It's a little wide and chubby, 
but I don't care. It's a nice large size. It didn't come out looking this big, so I was a little concerned. It always looked chubby, but it just didn't look this um, big. And it's starting to get the pillowiness as it's hardening, hardening off more. You might be able to tell from back here. You could see more like the depth in the back of the leaf, how it's forming that pillowiness. I don't know, but <sighs> my love is definitely renewed for this plant. I love it now again. I don't think this leaf is gonna die. I don't think so. It looks suspect, but I think it's just leaning because of where it is in the shelf. Honestly, this was pretty close to my window and it was turning towards, that's why this leaf is turned like that, because it was turning towards and reaching for the light, even though it was so, it's really bright and warm over there. Maybe because it's warm, I don't know. But then, why did I move it? I think maybe this leaf was starting to act funny, maybe turning downwards or something, so I moved it back in a way. And now it's kind of, you know, sitting up towards the light more, so. It just looks so good and I'm so happy with it. So what has it been? I think it's been about three months. So I think three months is a good amount of time for you to start seeing some improvements, if there's gonna be <laughs> improvements, because there's not always improvements, which you will see in one of these plants. Um, but yeah, that's a good enough time. You know, it takes about a month, a few weeks for it to get situated in this new situation, if that's what you've done to rejuvenate the plant. And then another month to start maybe growing some roots, which I will show you is a begonia bloom in here. Let me show you the root system. Has that definitely significantly increased as well? Like this plant has never, never had this extensive of a root system, like never. So. That was also a great improvement. I feel like I should top this off a little bit maybe because it has little, maybe it wants to form little corms there, but it's definitely loving pond. And <laughs> those corms that I put in here from the other plant by mistake are not doing anything. Um, I only see one that's come up, to be honest. So there might be another one in there, but yeah, that is the first plant, the Alocasia Friedex slash Michaeliziana doing very well, I am happy to say. The next one is also a good one. The next one is the Monstera Albo. I don't really show this plant a lot on my channel because at first it really was not doing so well. I only had this leaf, it was in moss, and it was just not doing anything for probably like the first two months that I had it until I changed it over to perlite and put it in my mini greenhouse. I'm not gonna say that perlite is what really made the difference. I just think that putting it in a mini greenhouse is what made the difference because yes, I had it on my shelf under a light. The light wasn't super close, but it was under a light, but it just must have needed more light than I knew. So I put it in the, in the greenhouse and it was like, the light was like right here. <laughs> and so it was like right there on this leaf I should say and as you can see it got a little burnt but it was worth it because it gave me these two beautiful leaves beautiful beautiful leaves and it has another on the way what I really like about this monstera is that the variegation is like just enough like it's like just enough for it to be interesting. The leaves are a little bleached. The green is a little bleached from being really close to the light, but it's just getting tall for my cabinet, and I don't know what I'm gonna do. Um, yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do because I feel like it needs to be, not necessarily in the cabinet, it just needs to have a good amount of sunlight or light, and the sunlight, from the window is different from the grow light light <laughs> so I don't know anyways um I feel like this leaf is gonna have a good amount of variegation as well you can kind of see like this whole part is white so it's gonna be pretty I think it's really gonna be pretty I'm really excited about it I don't like this scale barky stuff if y'all can see that that's on there I thought it was scale at first. It's just like this barky texture that it gets and it creeps me out, but whatever. I just had this stake in here to keep the node up from sitting in the perlite because I felt like um, this rots really easily. So I didn't want the node in the substrate. I just wanted the roots in the substrate. So that helped. 
and as you can see i'll take it out the pot i was trying to show, save the reveal for last of these roots because this root system wild okay um yeah it's wild so <laughs> this was the original airy root that it had you can see it's kind of like bark now but this one grew in my care and it came all the way down here you can see Oh, I'm thinking the camera's still tilted. And then another one's forming here. That's gonna go down into the substrate. And you can just see the aerial roots and the roots in general have just gone crazy in here. And it's doing very, very well. I'm probably not gonna take this out of perlite for a while. Maybe until, there's some coming out the bleh, <laughs> the bottom. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm probably not gonna take it out for a while. Oh my gosh, roots are coming up out of the top. I do need to water it though, it's very dry. So yeah, I let this dry all the way out. It's not like my other plants where I keep them moist. I let this dry all, like, dust all the way out <laughs> before I decide to water it again because it can take it and it's fine. As you can see, this is completely dry and the roots have not dried up. They're still plump and they're still white. Maybe I just need to add some more substrate on top because the roots are exposed up here. Yeah, okay. I'll do that when I'm done <laughs> because I can't cover the roots all the top all the way. They're all exposed up top there. But yeah, this is doing so good. I can't wait for this fourth leaf to come out. If it comes out by the time I'm editing this video, I will insert a picture so y'all can see how it's doing. But yeah, that is how my Monstera album is doing. Looking very good. Very happy. I do want to cut this leaf off but I don't know I kind of don't it doesn't really bother me but I know it looks janky it's okay speaking of monsteras we want to might as well do the other monstera in this video if you can't already see it in the frame the monstera deliciosa yes it looks much smaller than what it looks like when I first rehabbed it um it did not die off it well okay so i did pot it into like a as you guys saw in the first video but um it was a transition period it wasn't growing still but it wasn't dying and basically the soil roots were just kind of like mushing off and i think maybe one stem did um, mush off but it had a node so i put it in water and then the rest stayed in LECA and I, when I moved, it was still in LECA and that plant took the hardest hit during the move. A lot of the leaves yellowed and there wasn't too much left of it. Um, there was this and so basically someone on Wish Wednesday wished for a Monstera Deliciosa so I granted her wish and what I had was what was left of what was in the LECA and then I had what I had in water. I had the plant that I had in water. This was not it. I gave her the one that I had in water, <clears throat> which was like maybe a two to three leaf cutting. And then there was a smaller one of this that was still in the pot of LECA that I gave to her as well. So I gave her two pieces and then I just kept this one. And so this is what we have left. So it did still have quite a few leaves on it. Um, I think this got, got burnt from being where it was sitting at, but I moved it since then. But it's been in LECA doing fine. Um, it does have some new fuzzy root growth over here. Oh, I don't know if y'all saw this one. Some new growth over there. So yeah, it's doing okay. It's doing fine in LECA. Um, this is the newest leaf it looks a little funky but this is the newest leaf since it had been um repotted into this container <laughs> so it was still a lecker but since it was put into this container this is the newest leaf so it just looks a little crazy but it's gonna be okay it already is pregnant over here so it's gonna put out a new leaf and it's gonna be okay so now it's in my mom's room kind of set back away from the window I think it's okay there. I don't think I need to move it closer. I think it'll get enough light there. But yeah, this one is doing good. Good enough that I was able to give some away. So yeah. Um, I'm gonna do the sad one so that we don't end on a sad note. <laughs> the next one is another alocasia and I don't remember if it's called Mayan mask or something like that, but this is what's left of it. And this is purely my fault <laughs> because 
I had the one leaf left on it. I think it had several leaves when I repotted it. It had several leaves, but by the time I moved, it was down to one leaf. And I thought that I was gonna, I didn't sell it because maybe it had spider mites and that's why I didn't sell it. I don't know. I didn't sell it for whatever reason. I was like, whatever, it has one leaf. I might as well just bring it with me. And either I cut the leaf off right before I moved or I cut it off right when I got here because there was, is, was <laughs> a growth point. Oh, well, that's what's left of it there. And I said, it's fine. It'll produce a leaf because it had roots. It had all these roots. And I left it in the window one day, left it in the window and um, everything dried up, completely dried up completely completely dried up why i still have it in this container and i didn't dump it out yet pure laziness so that's what happened with this alocasia yeah not much more to say and on a happy note we will end with it some of it looks sad i guess i should have cut this off before i showed you guys but oh Oh, wow. You know what I'm finding, what I'm learning? Oh my God, that is why. Oh my God. Okay, I'm gonna quick show you this and then I'm gonna quick throw it in the shower because, oh my God, it's infested with, I don't even wanna, okay. <laughs> It has spider mites crazy. It's really easy for the plants in that sunroom to get spider mites because of how hot and dry it gets in there. And then on top of it being, well, it actually doesn't get really hot in there because there's AC in there, but the window, it's all windows. And so that does create some heat. And I'm just cutting off these leaves here. But these leaves, oh my God, I don't know if y'all can see it the spider mites on this thing oh my god they always the um leaves the older leaves always seem to get limp and go fall off like this um but i feel like people have much fuller elephant ear plants than i do and it's probably because mine is infested with spider mites i don't even want to put this down on my carpet so I don't want to put it on, okay, here, I'm going to put it on the humidifier for a minute, show y'all this, and then I got to bounce. This is, y'all have seen this in my recent videos, I've talked about it, it is not new to you, but if it is for some reason new to you, here it is, I'm trying to move back far enough to show you it, it's big and beautiful, but at the same time, it's infested with spider mice, it has brand new leaf, it's always putting out a leaf, non-stop. Oh my God, wow. Is that spider mite poop? There's like these brown. Oh my God. I've seen spider mites bad. Why didn't I notice this on this plant? Because you know what? The plants in the plant room, I mean plants in the plant room, the plants in the sun room don't always get as direct care. Oh my God. I'm telling you, it's not, I just moved this to my room though. It's been in my room for a week though. That's concerning. It did not look like this a week ago. This happened literally in a matter of maybe one and a half weeks. There's no way this looked this bad when it was in my sunroom. Well, okay. I mean, it's still happy-ish and growing so it's okay but it needs some work <laughs> i guess we should have examined that and we would have included it in the sad plant portion but it's not really a sad plant it's just um it needs some help just need some help that's all it'll be fine so anyways let me know in the comments below if you like this video what are some sad plants that you guys have right now what do you do to rehab your sad plants i know it depends on what is wrong with the plant um, that kind of determines how we handle our sad plants. 
for me, I consider my sad plants to be my plants that are just not thriving, like they're alive and they're not dead, but they're not thriving or growing. So that is what I consider to be my sad plants. And then I try to figure out what can I do to kind of get them out of the rut that they're in. So let me know in the comments below what you guys do, because I'd love to always get new ideas, new tips, new things to try, um, because that's just what makes plant life interesting. So thank you for watching and have a good night. Thank you.